Hey everybody, welcome to another special edition of Popcorn Talks, I Talk Movies. Today we are talking to an amazing writer, and I must say he's also a pretty amazing fashionista as well, uh, Mr. Chuck Hayward, so stay tuned. Welcome to Popcorn Talk, featuring movie discussion, news, and interviews. Popcorn Talk, we talk movies. to an amazing edition of I Talk Movies. I am so excited today because I have a friend in the studio today who's not only a friend, but is amazingly talented. So if I get a chance to kind of, you know, pick his braid and promote all this stuff, I am absolutely game. Mr. Chuck Hayward, welcome to the studio today. Hello, Keaton. <laughs> How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much for coming in, first of all. Thanks for talking to me. Most people don't want to hear what I have to say, so this is a new, uh, this is brand new for me. I <laughs> well, love it. Little do, little do they know, it's like all that matters is what you have to say because you're a writer, so I you know. force the actors to say everything. That's they want true. To say, That's true. That's true. We give them we give them good stuff to come out of their mouths, and they they make it usually funnier. So it it, <laughs> it, it makes I get credit for it still, which is awesome. That's yeah. awesome. No, yeah. you, as as which is well deserved. Well, you are now promoting your first feature film that yes. has come out. It's yep. called Fat Camp, and you wrote the screenplay, and first of all, guys, this film is hilarious. I got to watch it. It um, actually aired on BET today, which I know was a really big deal for you. Yeah. What did that feel like? Uh, it felt great. I mean, I grew up watching BET all the time, videos and and everything. So like being, you know, having something that I wrote on that network is pretty amazing. So yeah. it's and we, you know, that that actually came in uh, after the fact. Like we had already gotten into the LA Film Festival and we were just sort of expecting to go straight to VOD and then the producer called one day and was like so good news we're gonna be on BET and I was like holy shit like that's, that's amazing. yeah it was it was great I was really excited about that so so folks that don't have access to VOD or whatever will be able to just click it on and take a look so so this is, this is your first feature film and you you've done a lot of other writing prior mm -hmm. to this as well has writing always been kind of your direction like you know I feel like when everybody enters the film industry you kind of don't really know sometimes what you want to do. Has this mm -hmm. always been kind of your goal? Yeah, well, it started out I wanted to be a director. And then in college, I was I was started to write the stuff I was directing. And then I was like, wow, the writing is a lot more fun and a lot fewer headaches than the directing <laughs> is. And I don't have the most organized brain for directing. Mm -hmm. So the writing was great because I got to structure, you know, characters and come up with cool dialogue and just kind of like, I, I don't know, to me it was the part that I connected with a little bit more. Uh, and it was just, you know, it's, it's more fun to sit and create an idea and then hand it off to somebody and have them do the directing and see because then you get to sort of you get another perspective that you might not have considered that could make it better than yeah. you would imagine so uh, that part of it is pretty fun yeah I like it and, it and it's yeah like you just get to you have experiences in your life for whether they're good or bad uh, and the good ones you kind of just translate as they are for comedy and the bad ones you get to find the humor in these shitty situations that happen to you <laughs> and that's fun it's a cool challenge and it's actually therapeutic like you yeah. get to sort of uh you get to write out sort of what you wish you had said in a certain situation or uh you can you know somebody that you hate you get to sort of write their demise and so it's, it's really kind of a fun uh, like I said, it's therapeutic. It's a good it's way like to... like a musician. Like, yeah, like you know, yeah, Taylor yeah. Swift writes about all about her, all you know, exes, yeah, right. <laughs> Jay-Z just released an album, right? That's sure. about, you know, his fight with... Is the album released yet? Yeah, yeah, it's out. It's out. Okay, it's it's you know. fantastic, too. I've, you, you haven't listened I, to it I mean, yet. I heard Blue Ivy's rap. Uh, see, I haven't heard that one because that's on the special edition or something. Oh! I just got the regular <laughs> iTunes. You missed out. I missed out, man. Yeah, I, and I've, I've been a Jay-Z fan since high school. Like, And, you know, high school for me was a lot longer ago than it was for you. So it's been, gosh, 20 years or so since. Actually, no, more than 20 years since I've been a fan of his. And so, like, it's, it, it's, it's great to see him doing some of the best work this late in life when most rappers are out to pasture you know no, like it's yeah yeah and it's and it's arguably his best work so, so i mean you speaking of rapping you did you write the raps that we we see in uh this yes, film i did <laughs> and the reason that it <laughs> the reason that it works at all is because it's like a 12 year old rapping so and that's the level of my rap skills is about uh, that of a 12 year old so uh, it, it came across very authentic and it, you know I'm, I'm not winning any uh any you know world star hip hop awards or anything like so, that from so then did you did you not write the reggie like amazing like spoken word poetry? no i did not write that that's that's ooh. a little above my pay grade yeah <laughs> i was if i had written it it would have been the cheesiest like most over the top kind of like 
it would be like if you were writing a movie and you were like, hey, here's a bad slam poet. That's how it would have come out if I had written it. But. So you're definitely a comedy guy. I'm a, all comedy. Okay. Yeah, all comedy. And mostly because, you know, I, that's what I love to watch the most. But it's also like you have to sit with these projects for months and months and months and months. And it's like I'd rather sit around trying to make myself laugh than sit around trying to make myself cry. <laughs> uh, that's It's just Good it's point. a yeah, like it's it's just a more fun thing to have to occupy your time with. So now, what has kind of your are you kind of the first person in your family to venture into the entertainment industry? Yeah, yeah, I am. Um, everybody else had like grown up jobs, like <laughs> real people jobs, and I always joke like I get to play make believe for a living. So it's like you lucky know, you. Yeah, lucky me exactly, <laughs> and it's it's all sort of because of all the work that they did and they were super supportive and like awesome. you know hey i want to go to this syracuse because it's got a good communication school and then hey i want to move to la or i want to intern in new york in the summer and they were all just like perfect all right if that's what you got to do like we, we you know it. we support you and uh yeah they they made a lot of sacrifices and so it was it was i'm, I'm really happy that it's starting to pay off now because it it vindicates you know for yeah. the tough times and it also makes them see that I wasn't lying <laughs> like no I really am working hard out here because my, my folks are in Delaware that's where yeah. I was born and raised and so like they don't know a ton about the entertainment industry so they're sort of taking everything I say as gospel which is great so yeah like I said they were always in my corner and like when I was down when I was in the dumps about stuff they would be you know just remember what the goal is remember that mm -hmm. it's a, a marathon and not a sprint and you gotta just you have to put in your time you have to work really hard it's, it's a lot of nights and weekends and then doing day jobs that you hate and it's I mean it's the typical LA <laughs> yeah, story yeah. Right? Every, Every, actors everybody experience that comes that. out here has to you know unfortunately do it unless you get real lucky real quick right which which some people do <laughs> so, yeah. and god bless them but that was not my case <laughs> it was not my story at all so uh yeah like, but it, you know I, I moved out here right after college in 2002 and so I was an assistant for nine years and so that like and you know, since you're not making a ton of money, so my parents, you know, I'd see on Facebook that people are having kids and buying houses yeah. and like nice new cars and shit. And I'm just like, you're I'm wondering how I'm gonna make <laughs> yeah. rent next month. And then like, you know, something little like a like a, a dented fender or you know something like that. Yeah. Like your your car craps out. You have to like that's a huge monumental issue. So yep, it's good to be good to have those days. Hopefully. For in the rear view mirror, they're definitely in the rear view mirror now. But hopefully, it's they good to see like that you've like gotten out of it because I'm I'm in it. You're I'm in it. it. I'm <laughs> in like, it right now. I'm, I'm hanging out. I'm living you're, there. You're an inspiration. Well, thank you, thank you, thank <laughs> you. So yeah. speaking of kind of right, you know, writing and stuff, and like being able to show stuff to your parents, how good did it feel to be like, look at this movie now that like I wrote this? Well, it's have it's, they seen it? No, they haven't seen it, okay. and it's kind of a it's kind of a two part answer. One, it's so great to be able to show them like. Here are the fruits of my labor. Here's what I've been, you know, when I've been telling you, I've been working on this thing for all these mm -hmm. months or years. Uh, this is this is the product of it. I have something to show for it, and so that part of it is fantastic. And they're so proud of like, you know, that I've I was able to stick it out, and that people responding well to the to the stuff that I'm putting out. And then the bad side is like, my mom's a little bit more like uh, conservative, so <laughs> a lot of the stuff I write is pretty foul language because I have the dirtiest mouth that you could possibly imagine. Yeah, I mean. and, yeah. <laughs> so like, so I I told her because Fat Camp is is gonna, is on BET today, and I was like, Mom, you should watch the Fat Camp version and then I was like dad you should watch the version on on demand because that's yeah. the unrated one and it you won't like cry because you've raised a foul mouth sailor kid so. uh, not only a foul mouth a foul mouth sailor but a foul mouth sailor who makes children then say this yes yeah exactly <laughs> well that's the best part and because the thing is like I wanted it to be authentic and I wanted it to be realistic so and I remember when I was 14 15 like we had filthy mouths like not in front of our parents because yeah. we get in trouble but when you get together with your guy friends and your girlfriends, like you're just the f words are flying, and it, you just don't think of it. Your your language is not that evolved yet, <laughs> so you just sort of say what you think is the coolest or the funniest. So I wanted that to come out, and you're misinformed about everything from sex to like <laughs> politics to the way the world works to anything like that. It's a yeah. relationship, so you you kind of make up for it sometimes with profanity because it's it's easy yeah so I wanted that to be uh, we were talking a moment ago about heavyweights and yeah so like, yeah yeah which, which was you know obviously very similar in, in uh, concept to this movie but the tone was completely different I think it was like a Disney movie so it was four kids very clean and this is the, the adult well, the <laughs> yeah, adult yeah. was the bad guy right whereas right. the kids are kind of 
there I mean it's the 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 rival camp that's the bad guy but at the same time the kids pick on each other so bad yeah they and that's another and pick on the main character and pick on the main yeah. character and the main character picks on them yeah. back so and that's another thing that I thought was really authentic about or that I wanted to be authentic about it was like young boys bust each other's balls all the time like the, you can't if you're 14 you can't say to your best friend hey i love you buddy i just want to say you know you're one of my best friends and gosh i hope we're friends forever it's yeah. like hey fuck you or whatever <laughs> it's like hey shit bag or whatever like that's just sort of how immature girls guys don't talk. use this type of language no girls <laughs> girls tend to be a little bit more but you know they say it behind each other's backs yeah, <laughs> no, <laughs> we're just writing it in our diaries, yeah, in your diaries like, right? i hey. effing hate her and, and like, then you're like hey girl and like yeah. even when we wrote it in our diaries i feel like it was like f star 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 uh, dash yes because <laughs> if your parents find it Lord, then it's like, like you can yeah, they're god like oh forbid. my god god forbid then it's over for you yeah so how much of the I mean, this this is so much about kids and mm -hmm. so much about this kind of young... It was almost like a coming-of-age story sure. for the main character as well. How much of this is maybe autobiographical? Any of it? Like, the, um, like I, which percentage, I would say, did you pull from? I would say it's third, about 30% Okay, 30%. Yeah, okay, okay, like, okay. I, I like to think that I'm not as big a douchebag as the main character is. No. <laughs> but, uh, it, it's, it, and because he's a jerk in the beginning, and it, the whole movie is about him sort of growing up and learning how to treat people and mm -hmm. kind of throwing away some of his misconceptions that he has about certain types of folks and just basically becoming an adult. Mm -hmm. Becoming an adult and being taught by children, basically. <laughs> the children teach him how to grow up. So it's pretty, uh, it, it's, it's, I, I kind of feel like, like, and I went to camp for a majority of my youth, actually my entire youth, uh, and so a lot of my experiences from summer camp I was able to throw into that, into the movie, and it, it lent um, an air of authenticity, I think, to like the whole camp world. And, and Any particular like things that were in the movie that you can kind of, like that was that a personal? That we definitely yeah. did. Um, the one I use the other, there's a skinny dipping scene which we used to do a lot at summer camp. Like we, when when we got older, like after we were campers and we were like counselors in training and counselors, <laughs> we, you know, nighttime you'd have a bunch of free hours and yeah. you know then we would jump into the bay, you know, <laughs> splash around and you know 15, 20 people all splashing around naked. And that's before you actually learned to about body shape. Yeah. <laughs> You're just kind of like, hey, I'm I'm 16. I look great. Like you have no sort of yeah, you don't have the hangups yeah, that we yeah, have now. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean also. So I thought what was, I mean, I was a kid who, when I was younger, I was a bigger kid. And so, like, I related a ton to this Oh, show. were you really? I was. I would have never known I, that. I'll have to show you some yeah, pictures of, of me funny. when I was a, when I was a little kid. Oh, my so. gosh. <laughs> um, yeah, I was bigger. And so I really, that's such a delicate, I feel like, subject to be sure, working with. Sure. And I feel like when you guys went around, so we're going to write a movie about, like, a bunch of fat kids. Mm -hmm. Like, did you guys get any kind of opposition to that or, like... Where no. they just kind of like, go for it, we'll read it, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, how they you said, do. well, because the, the idea originally came to me from uh, this guy, Shane Dawson. He's like mm -hmm. a big YouTube star. And he had gone to Fat Camp when he was younger. So he uh, was working with a production company and he said, hey, I want to write this movie. I, I want to do this movie about Fat Camp. Mm -hmm. You know, well, let's find a writer. So I, I pitched them a take and they dug it. And so they were like, hey, do whatever you want to do. If you go too far, like, we want it to be a hard rated R. And so if you go too far, we'll pull you back. And then they just never did. So, uh, it, which was great because I or see my friends do at that age. So I, I, like, I wanted to be true to that element of the story. And I felt like you did do such a good job. Like it, that's such a delicate kind of topic and not only kind of, you know, body weight issues and all that stuff, yeah. but you dealt with kind of kids coming out. Mm -hmm. You dealt slightly. I mean, there's a couple kind of race things that were also kind sure. of mentioned in it, yeah. but everything I felt like was dealt with in such like a, like a nice, just, I don't know if it's empathetic or just kind of like a fun way that it didn't it I did I wasn't offended by any of it because right. I was like wait no that's a really like you, you answered every question I ever had when I was like <laughs> I was like oh wait that's like I don't I don't know about that and then like like a couple lines later you would answer that question and be like oh okay now cool. I'm good now I'm, I'm good, good. I'm in the clear yeah yeah, right. yeah yeah so I, I have to commend you on well, how, you. on doing that because that's hard to do in comedy when you're I feel like like writing such a raunchy thing but then kind of like letting the audience immediately forgive you for it and not get hung up on it right like yeah, they exactly. just enjoy it and they they you give them you gave us all permission to laugh at these things that 
a lot of times we don't have permission that's, to laugh. That's at. exactly what we wanted to do, and then also the beauty of having it come from you know from the mouths of babes, that kind of thing. Like <laughs> these kids, you know, they don't necessarily haven't been taught political correctness yet, mm. and they, and maybe you know it, it, as was the case for me, like you have to be behave in a very strict way at home. Uh, and be proper and you know behave yourself but then when you get out of your parents purview it's you know it's all uh, anything goes so you you're sort of these teenagers are finding their way and sort of seeing like okay this I can say this to be joking but this is inappropriate mm -hmm. or I can go here but somebody's gonna be like hey that's not cool you know so you get to go on that journey you learn with them and I think it's I think it's really fun to watch and when you're uh, you went to camp, right? Yes. Yeah. So when you're in camp and you're you're living with you know five, six, seven other kids, it's it's the bonding is so much more intense than it is at school because yeah. in school you're you're sitting together for you know 45 minutes and you're not really supposed to talk. And this is a situation where you're living with people all day long, doing activities with them. You're you know showering and eating and like like every moment of your day it's, is spent with this group of yeah, people. Yeah, it's it's your first kind of feeling of independence right. I, when your parents send you away to camp, and yeah. so all of a sudden you're like, wait, I I can say that or I can break that sure. rule or I can. I mean, I loved the one kid who figures out that that he was gay right. and kind of you know a rid like. I don't want to. I don't want to spoil yeah. it. But I, <laughs> I, I just, I, I really loved that kid's storyline and like that, how like the group came together with that kid and it was. I just, I, I really loved all the kids. So kudos to whoever casted this thing too. Yeah, they did a great job. That was uh, my friend Susan Paley Abramson and Justine Hemp. Hempy? I forget how to exactly pronounce it. I can spell it, but I can't say good. it. Yeah, uh, they did, and I worked with Susan on uh, Entourage back in the day. Ah, and that's so, fun. Yeah, and so I was like, as soon as it was time to cast, I was like, you gotta meet my friend Susan. Like, she's fantastic, and we had a great, I mean, she picked, she found all these kids, and they were all great. And they, they just got better and better as we were shooting, so it was... Were you on set nice. every day with them, working with them, or...? Not every day I came to set, you know, I, they don't need me on set, yeah, but yeah. it was kind of like, it's my first movie, I got, <laughs> you know, I'm geeking out here and people say my words on... Because I'd seen that on television before, but in, in TV, uh, the writing is so collaborative. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm hearing some of my words, but, like, this is all written by me, which was, like, which was, you know, it's kind of surreal to be, like, because you spend so many years... Uh, you know, writing stuff while you're practicing and while you're honing your craft, and you never hear it read out loud, you never see it on its feet, and so to get that experience, and you know, you're looking around at all these, you know, crew guys and, and hair and makeup and, and the kid, you know, the actors and everything, and there's monitors and cameras, and you're just like, wow, like, this is coming true, like, yeah. this is really happening. It's, it's so, the yeah. dream, yeah. yeah. it's the dream, exactly, it's, it's, and it's as kind of mind-blowing as you think it would be. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, not only was it on BET today, mm -hmm. but uh, we can also get Fat Camp on VOD. It's available on iTunes, Google Play, Amazon. Yeah. Anything and else? Is I, that... I, those are the main ones that I know of. Okay. I'm sure there are others, but uh, I would go check check on that. <laughs> Wherever you get your uh, your video entertainment, I think that it should be available there. Yeah. Well, besides Fat Camp, which you guys have to check it out, seriously, you are also a writer on the hit Netflix show, uh, Dear White People. Yes, indeed. Which, uh, you know, if, if people haven't uh, seen it, it was based off a movie. Mm -hmm. Same same creator, right? Same yep. writer? Yeah. Yep. And are you in the room? Is he in the room every day he's with you guys? He's in the room every day. So yeah, he's so the it's it's great because the guy who had the original concept for the movie is there guiding us in the show. And so he was he did the movie and it released in 2014, I believe. So he's had, you know, a couple of years to really like get even better and then he came into the series and he was like I want it to be funnier than the movie. I wanted to to delve deeper into issues than the movie did. I want more character. So we really it's like a playground. Like we really just got to go in there and throw everything at the wall, and and we, I think we really came up with some cool stuff. And the response that we've been getting has been really positive. Um, and the, the negative responses that we got were, were before uh, before the show premiered. Some people were a little offended by the title, and they you know so there were there were people online who were kind of hating on oh, it. Oh gosh! But the great thing was like it got us a lot of free publicity. <laughs> so it was like actually ended up making the show a bigger conversation topic in, yeah. in the in the zeitgeist. And so I think we benefited, we profited from it. So. And I I just marathoned uh, the entire series, guys, over the weekend. And I could not stop watching it. It's, it, it's very bingeable. Yeah. It's super bingeable. <laughs> and now I'm like, wait, when is season two coming out? Because you're working. It has been picked up for season two. Correct? It has been picked up. Okay. We, we, we're about two weeks into writing season two. And yeah, it'll, it'll be on Netflix sometime in 2018. We're not sure. Usually probably the beginning of the year at some point. But 
That's um, really awesome. Yeah, we're stoked. It's it's the best working experience ever. Well, and like you you say you love comedy and and as much as it's a comic tone with that show, I mean, you guys are dealing with some really yeah. really kind of it, political issues, right? Like so many different issues that are like in society today are at the forefront of everybody's kind of mind. And I just that there's one episode in particular with Reggie that I I I mean, I was I was in tears. Yeah. I was in tears watching that episode, and the way you guys came out of that, I just I kudos, kudos, Thank kudos, you. kudos. And you, but you're not the only one. There was a lot of people whew. on the cast who were in tears as we were shooting it, and, the, and I don't mean like you know screen tears. I mean yeah. like between takes. Like it, people had to like mellow out and like really kind of get get it together because it was such an emotionally charged yeah. scene. So I, th I mean, I thought it was really like, and it was it was directed by Barry Jenkins, who did uh, Moonlight, who wrote and directed Moonlight, yeah. so an Academy Amazing. Award winner. <laughs> so obviously he knocked it out of the park. Yeah. And he's he's couldn't be like nicer and more collaborative and more fun, and yeah. So it just it everyone was totally on their A game and brought it. And I would say that for the entire season, like it was yeah, it was it was a really positive experience. And the the actors are all like young people, and they're you know. They're super excited to be working on this. They're loving coming to work. They're, a lot of them would come up and ask the writers questions about, hey, how did how did you want this to go? Or I'm confused about this. Or like, can, can we come up with an idea yeah. for something for me to say instead? Of, like, it was a very, it was super collaborative and they were, uh, and, and actually, uh, several of the actors were friends with uh, with me and with Justin, who's the creator and, and director. Yeah, like he, so we had a instant rapport with them already. So we were we were able to just kind of go up and like at a certain point, I looked around. I was like, I can't believe they're letting us make a TV show just with all of our friends. I, like, I, it's I mean, again, rad. that's the dream is that's to dream, eventually, right. you know, you, you sit around and cookouts. I feel like as you're trying to like make it in this sure. industry and looking at all your friends who everybody has these different skills and you're always think, oh, someday I'm going to get to work with all you guys. Right. Exactly. And you've done it. I've you, done it. You've so done far, it. Yeah. You're still doing it. But we got, I got to still got to work with all of our friends. We got, I know. We got we a gotta whole do group something. of friends. We got to get together. And do it. We, we got writers and directors and actors and editors. So yeah, we got to. We'll put it in the universe. Yes. Yeah. Someday we're gonna, soon. Yes, I will, indeed. Chuck will make me say <laughs> yeah. really rude, inappropriate. inappropriate things yeah, yeah. that I will not be able to show my parents. Exactly. <laughs> my goal, yeah, if you can show your parents without blushing, I have not done my job. That's sort of how I think. <laughs> well, I did go see Brokeback Mountain with my dad, which that, oh. I, I don't know if I've told you that story. That's, no, that, that's for that's another time. No, that's a great story. Okay. Oh, it was a, it was, it was, it was a bonding moment for right, sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Daddy daughter movie dates yeah. were never the same again. No, I imagine that car ride home uh, was pretty uh, pretty quiet. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Like, not a lot so we don't it. we don't speak of it yeah. anymore right. between the two of us. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so uh, going back to dear white people, yeah. do you have a favorite episode or a favorite? Because every episode kind of goes from a different character's point of view. Yeah. Did you have a favorite one that you wrote on? Um, I I think my favorite one was either episode two or episode four. Uh, two was followed the character Lionel, who's uh, a gay guy, who's a journalist, and he's, yeah, it's sort of his coming out and sort of figuring out where his place is in the world and, and uh, you know, just coming to turn, like having a crush on his straight roommate, which is something that I can certainly relate to. Who's super and, good looking. Yeah, who's <laughs> an incredibly handsome guy. And then uh, f episode four was Coco, who was kind of like, we set her up sort of to be the villain in the beginning, and mm -hmm. then you, you four is sort of her origin story, and you get to you get to see how she became the way she is, and what factors led to it, and you really sympathize with her, and she ends up being like at the beginning of it, she's somebody everybody hates, and by the end of it, a lot of people are like, "That's my favorite character, like that's the person." She was I can she was a to fun the most. story. Yeah, to super fun story. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I I have to say I. Because what I, as I was watching it, and tell me if I interpreted this wrong, okay. I felt like every character was kind of like a enhanced stereotype of like how people kind of generalize, you know, people in the black community. Sure. And that, I mean, again, the, the, the show is called Dear White People, and I learned a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that was, it was a letter to you. But yeah, you it, was, yeah, it, right, it yeah. taught me so much. Right. Um, and I just felt like by doing that, by almost making these people initially seem like somewhat caricatures, but then kind of delving into their minds in each of their own episodes, you, right. you realize, oh, even if you look at somebody and uh, you know you judge a book by its cover, there's so many other layers to no matter who you are dealing with, no matter the color of their skin. Right. And that's what I just, I thought, I don't think a show has done 
that well ever until I saw Dear White People. I've never like seen a show that's like really given me kind of a, like at first a caricature stereotype, yeah. but then and then broken ma- it broke down. It down yeah. And by the end of it, I'm like, oh my God, I get you. Like to every single one of those characters. Cause it's such an ensemble cast. It's an right. ensemble piece. Yeah. yeah. And it, and the cool thing was like, it's, it's called Dear White People, so I think a lot of people assume it's it's going to be us just like railing against white people the entire time. <laughs> but I don't think Netflix would have allowed that show no. to go on the air. Like it's way more nuanced. It's way more, and, and we spend a majority of the season, I would say, dealing with the inner um, interpersonal relationships between our character, mm-hmm. amongst our characters, mm-hmm. and and you get to see a lot of their faults, like the black characters' faults and the black characters' hypocrisies, and sort of the way that they, the, the whole show deals with like self versus identity versus perception yeah. and sort of like how you know and when you're in college you're still sort of forming you're still finding all that stuff so while someone might present a certain way uh they are more layered or they might not even be that person like that might be who they aspire to be so they're kind of faking it till they make it in that regard mm-hmm. and then we also made sure that we wanted to have like the white characters on the show be three-dimensional also because we didn't want it to be like oh black people bad white people good like that wasn't the the intention so you come away actually having a lot more you uh, sympathizing a lot more with some of the white characters and also sort of revealing some of the black character stereotypes that they have about the white mm-hmm. characters and how those stereotypes are as wrong as the stereotypes that the white folks have against the black folks so it's like nobody emerges squeaky clean in this which i think is what you are responding yeah, to yeah yeah which is absolutely. like absolutely yeah. everybody it puts everybody kind of on the same level and right. makes you just see the human right rather than the color or the or you know the the hipster or the the prep or the jock or the yeah. the, the you know the, the slam poet or yep. the the president it's it's yeah it just puts everybody on an equal level yeah so going into season two can you can you share anything can you give us um, I can share that we're, the season two, I think we're doing, we're getting a little bit more personal um, and it, it's sort of less, like fewer meetings and protests and stuff like that. And it's more about, I mean, they're, they're, like that student activism is still sort of the driving force of the show, mm-hmm. but we don't get into the minutia as much. It's more about now that you know who these characters are, let's really get into the weeds with them and really like, you know, figure out what makes them tick and how they fuck up with each other and you know what the, what their relationships are and how how they what their relationships were in the past versus what they're growing into mm-hmm. so we really we wanted to make it more personal and again funnier like we always want to be funny so like <laughs> you know it's it we have a lot of fun with it so i think season 2 i think a lot of stuff that you loved about season 1 will be better in season 2 and i think a lot of the stuff that maybe wasn't so strong we sort of slough away and make sure that like yeah so you guys have kind of gotten your stride now right yeah we you kind of you kind of chip away all the stuff that doesn't need to be there and you're left with the yeah. sculpture you know i have to say that's that's something you are very good at both of these things that i've watched is like you're so good at giving your audience permission to laugh at things that are like a lot of that times they're not are like, supposed to laugh at yeah can i laugh at this well and that's but, the thing because it starts conversations it and does it, and it sort of makes you challenge what your opinions are on stereotypes or about propriety or political correctness you sort of you sort of understand like okay what's at the core of these stereotypes that i have or why why can't i laugh at that like what is it about that issue or that topic that makes it so um off limits and I, that makes us want to make jokes about it more. Like it, it's it's because there is always something. Fun. I mean, when you're around your friends, you sort of if there's a, a, a bad thing that happens or some sort of a tragedy, like you tend to make end up making jokes about it. It may not be right away. It may be a week yeah. or two later. You're just kind of like yeah, yeah, yeah right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. like. Yeah, the, yeah. She got out of each other's, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like, you deal with the breakup yeah. or something. You tend to let the person <laughs> heal first, and then you start with the joke. So yeah. it's kind of, that's sort of the attitude that we took was like, we should be able to make any subject funny. And there are some subjects that we're going to be dealing with that aren't funny at all. Uh, so, yeah, you'll see some of that. Well, I'm excited yeah, for season two on Netflix next year, 2018. 2018, don't know when exactly, but definitely 28 awesome i cannot wait yeah. well before i any interview i do i always am about putting things out in the universe we okay. already put out in the universe we're gonna work together soon you're, you're gonna, gonna make me say inappropriate things production. it's gonna yeah. be great right uh hopefully it's like a movie but i want to know kind of your dream director to work with we're gonna, we're gonna go Ooh, down we're gonna go down the line good. yeah I, I mean i already worked with barry jenkins I was that's, saying, that's pretty you, uh got... <laughs> set the bar kind of high for myself um I would let's that's a great question I who do I love 
I really like, oh, okay, so like um, Jay Roach. I'll okay. say Jay Roach. So Jay he Roach. did like um, Meet the Parents and, uh, right. yeah. yeah, and, and, um, he did a couple of movies on HBO that were more politically yeah. centered. So he, it was, one was called Recount. One, one was uh, Game Change. About Recount was about the 2000 election uh -huh. between uh, Al Gore and and uh, George Bush, and it was sort of how, you know, oh, like how it dragged on and on and on, and they, they had to recount ballots, and there was this whole. You like that political stuff, uh, don't was you? But yeah. fan, like I've such I nerd out on that yeah. stuff so yeah. hard. Uh, and then he did um, Game Change, which was about uh, Sarah, Sarah Palin, Palin yeah, yep. back in in the 2008 election. So really, just a, a hilarious guy, but also very like cerebral. And his, and his stuff is it, it can hit really hard, and it can it can you'll learn something, but you'll still be entertained, you'll still be laughing, and even when it's not a comedy, there's still humor in there. Yeah, yeah. So dream actor and actress that you hope to say your words someday. Besides Keaton Markey. Besides Keaton, of course. I mean, that goes that goes without saying. Um, but my idol is George Clooney. I would love to have him do. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. Cause he is super funny and I love his politics and I, you know, I love that he's active, you know, globally. He's, he's got a lot of initiatives that, you know, that are trying to like make people's lives better around the world. So I think that the, the combination of those three things and he, he has a sense of humor about himself. Uh, it, I just I would love to to, see, to have him say some of my words. Um, actress, I would say. Wait. Uh, okay. Wait. I'm gonna I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna get this. Do I? I will give you time. Yeah. Give me a minute. Uh, <laughs> shoot. Who would it be? Okay. This sounds ridiculous, but I love it. Okay. You, gotta put it out, you have to put it out in the universe. You have to do it. I I'm like do George. It. George, come on. Chuck. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. George and Chuck. Yeah, yeah. We need to make this it's, happen. It's going to happen. It's it's only a matter of time. <laughs> I've been watching Grace and Frankie on Netflix a lot, so I, and I Great show. Jane Fonda is hilarious to me. I got I grew up, you know, I've watched 9 to 5 and stuff like that. Yeah. I've seen that movie like 100 times. So writing with somebody like that who's such a legend and who who does so few projects and so like she picks him yeah. she picks him pretty specifically and so I'd I'd love to write something for her just, you know, real funny like that. And, I Jane, George? Yeah. You got you got your marching orders, yeah, guys. Chuck, yeah, Chuck's right. here. Chuck's here. He says, "Hey, I'll write you something." Boom. Uh, final question: uh, Dream or this, the, the dream scenario to put out sure. in the universe? Dream franchise to write for? Dream franchise. Is that one that exists already, or one that hasn't been done yet? Either. 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 I've okay. had somebody like say Thundercats, and we talked about Thundercats we, for twenty minutes. We, yes, I feel like we talked about Thundercats on <laughs> our last too, trip. Yeah, yeah, I think that's we what it was. Yeah, we did Thundercats. I, I would love to do a, a comedic version of, of Thundercats, but oh I should God. probably think of something we didn't talk uh, about. Before. No, because literally the last director I interviewed, he said his his like dream project was to make the Thundercats movie. Was so if you really? wrote it, yeah, then he, he could, could direct, direct it. it. Totally. But I gotta I gotta connect. Yeah, things. connect us. I was about to say. We... I'll be Chitara. Don't worry yeah. about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'd be in, you'd be in hair and makeup for five hours I love every it. day. I've done yeah, seven hour fun. makeups before. Oh like, yeah, for like Comic Con. Yeah, I've done that yeah, stuff. I saw some old pictures. So there. besides Thundercats, because we're already gonna that's already we're gonna that's do that. already that's in, gonna in the works. <laughs> uh, I would say, gosh, what am I really into? I feel like um, there's a podcast I listen to all the time called The Read. Which uh, our friend Cherie actually introduced me to, oh. and uh, and it's like one of the funniest podcasts ever. And so I would like to write either a TV show or a movie based on those two characters. And they're just these like, uh, he's a gay guy, she's a lesbian, and they're ones. He's from Florida, she's from Oklahoma, and they just are unbelievably funny, unbelievably like witty and sharp and smart, and they can talk about politics, pop culture. Uh, sex relationships they they run they completely run the gamut and they're just like ev pretty much everything out of their mouths is hilarious and actually uh, Crystal who's the woman uh, who's, who's the the female part of the crew she did uh, a couple episodes of, of Drunk History so like I love Drunk could, History oh, that is it's like that my is favorite the show, best show. <laughs> it's, it's one of those ideas that I was like why didn't I think like I, I'm angry at myself for not thinking of it I so badly so want to do Drunk Broadway and just get drunk and like Ooh. explain and do that on YouTube oh 
So oh, somebody that's might steal dope. my idea, but I I'm like, like wouldn't it just be fun to get really drunk and be like, so this is what happens in Phantom of the Opera. Right. Like, yeah, that would be great. Or Wicked, and then you're trying to sing while you're drunk. I yeah. think it could be hilarious. <laughs> it could be. Derek, if you're listening, man, we got a spinoff <laughs> for you. Yeah, That's great. I volunteer as tribute. Yeah. <laughs> that's what's up. Awesome. Well, what else do you have coming up now? Anything you can talk about? Yeah, um, I, I we shot a movie last year called Stepsisters that'll be in theaters sometime soon probably uh, if not by the end of the year very early 2018 cool. uh, and that's about a white sorority that does a step show and uh, and so and like the sort of ripple effect that that has on the campus and the, the, the girl who teaches them how to step and so also deals with a lot of issues of race and cultural appropriation but it also deals with sort of same thing like um, looking at somebody and seeing a stereotype yeah. and then getting to know them a little bit better and seeing that there are a lot more layers and levels that you that if you were being lazy wouldn't wouldn't notice or wouldn't be able to dig down it's and find like, bring it on mixed with house bunny yes exactly <laughs> i told i said bring it on means stump the yard that awesome. was that's okay, like the way cool. i described yeah, yeah. bring it on is one of my favorite movies of i probably it's amazing it's easily 25 or 30 times i've seen it so yeah and so i wanted to make something with that kind of and bring it on actually had a pretty strong uh storyline about about they race did. and about yeah and about appropriation and mm -hmm. sort of when it's you know what is what is borrowing and inspiration and what is stealing and and you know commodifying and it was a really i thought the way that they did it was so clever and you but it didn't it was not heavy at all yeah like yeah. It, it was you were laughing the entire time and all the girls were hilarious and just like and you huge know. stars now all those women. yeah they're all huge stars now and, and it was very very kind of girl powery and my sister was a cheerleader for her entire life so i knew that world already i've definitely sat through my share of like eight hour cheerleading competitions <laughs> and I and I'm just like at 10 years old I'm like I just want to go home and watch TV why am I watching this but like <laughs> but what made that movie so resonant to me was that like oh I, I it's exactly what that world is like like they, yep. they, they nailed it so yeah that 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 is really kind of I wanted to make a movie that was kind of like that but a little bit more updated and it's college instead of high school so it's a little bit a little bit edgier but yeah. not necessarily it's and not the stakes like are dirty. a little bit higher though like I feel like yeah. when you're when you're in college right absolutely or you they, feel like they are and then you get in the real world and you're like oh, oh that college. meant nothing <laughs> yeah college meant absolutely nothing I want to yeah. go back and you're like I've never been so carefree in my entire life oh my god yeah, yeah. That, that's another thing dear white people it's like I miss college like, it does just make like, you miss college oh. it's so funny because I've talked to a few people who have been like um, yeah did, did somebody on your show go to like Amherst because that's where I went and it's exactly what, it, what my school was like or like, I went to you know Syracuse that's where I went and so like and it, it feels a lot like what my college experience yeah. was like too so the fact that people can relate to it that are coming from all different sorts of university experiences means I think we did something right like, yeah. I, th I think that means we we hit the tone that we were looking for and the authenticity too no, which is it's important so great so uh steps yeah stepsisters, stepsisters? Um, that, yeah again and that was directed by uh, Charles Stone who is um who directed Drumline so like I love yeah, Drumline that's one of the best college okay, movies I can't wait to see this yeah movie now. and he he kills it and it's a lot of young up-and-coming actors and actually two of the actors from Dear White People are are in stepsisters which two uh Reggie Marquis yeah, the I guy love who plays Reggie, Reggie yeah Marquis Richardson Ugh. And then uh, Nia Gervier, who plays Kelsey. It's a it's a smaller role in Dear White People, yeah. but it's a it's a pretty big pretty role big she role has in Stepsisters. Good for so her. yeah, it's dope. I'm excited. It, it, again, great to work with my friends. And then two of my good friends, uh, Ben Jones and Lena Waithe, were the producers on that movie. So again, just working Kelsey. with working hey, with friends, that's man. What, that's it's, why this industry is all about that networking and those friendships. All <laughs> about that networking, man. And when it comes to like when it comes to fruition that way. It's it just really kind of warms your heart, you know. Yeah. And then um, I'm working on another movie. I'm actually doing a rewrite right now on it um, for a, a company called The Firm. And so Ti, who's uh, the rapper, he I, had yeah. I'm sorry, <laughs> duh. I know who Ti yeah, is. Yeah, you know Ti. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I am late. I always Dear feel the Keaton, need to explain. Ti <laughs> yeah, yeah. is, is a, a rapper. rapper from Atlanta, <laughs> Georgia. Yeah. Um, he had this idea for a movie that was kind of like. Um, pitch perfect, but it, with high school teen girls singing groups like in underfunded schools. So it's like Love it. it's kind of like a like a like a black pitch perfect is how we sell it, and it's just a lot of fun. It's it's a lot of the same coming of age stuff. Mm -hmm. It's people having their fronts versus you know, you know you know their public personas versus who they really are, who they're trying to grow into. It's girls learning how to be responsible. So yeah, like my two 
movies are all well not so fat camp is super guy it's super duty. dude it's super, super dude. dude movie and then these the other two way. yeah exactly <laughs> these other two are all girls like the the only guys in those movies are the girls love interests so like they it's it's i'm very girl power i'm very that's, you know, I, that's love the thing. That I was watching fat camp and i was like oh th this like surprises me some of the things like the the subjects and stuff that the kids are talking about because yeah. i was like i know chuck and i know chuck is like like Super. I, if if you don't want to be a call feminist, but I would say like <laughs> no, I, he's super I girl power, proudly. super feminist, and like an awesome person to have in your corner. So I was just like, oh, Chuck, Chuck wrote this. This seems out of Chuck. Chuck's yeah. little thing, but so but it makes sense that you know. But yeah, because you're that going was that. that was the way the character was Those described the, yeah, to me. That's like that's exactly who it who was. He was, and I know that guy. Like yeah. I, I've you know <laughs> gone to high school and college with that guy, so yeah. I knew that voice without necessarily having it be exactly what I would want to say. And and so, exactly, you know, yeah. and you get to, I, I would say, like, I get to, like, you know, air out my inner douche. Like, I get to <laughs> really, like, explore the darker depths of my brain. The douche of Chuck. Yes, exactly. <laughs> that sounds yeah. so bad. <laughs> that's right. so But it sounds very clean, so that's Yes, good. it's yeah, just yeah. clean. Yeah, you're, you're cleaning yeah. them up. Right, exactly. For the next two girl power <laughs> movies, gotta yeah. get the douche out. <laughs> right, exactly. So, yeah, so I, and I and I love that, too, because because they're so different. And so um, uh, we don't have a title for the for Ti's movie just yet, but because Stepsisters is is a little bit more mainstream, it's a little bit more like um, uh, up tempo, mm -hmm. and then the Ti movie it's a little bit more grounded, it's a little bit grittier, but still you know with a lot of comedy, still with a lot of heart, and then Fat Camp is just you know balls to the wall, yeah, like anything goes. It, it's very immature in a good way. And, and by saying immature, I mean we're talking about teenagers, yeah. like young teenagers. So for them to be, you know, so basically Dawson's Chuck, Creek, yeah. you know, like that Chuck can do anything. I can do it all. I can <laughs> basically can do, do it all. all. You hear he that, can George write from and Jane any, Fonda? Yeah, yeah, George and Jane. <laughs> yeah, right. It's you know he might be writing from like kids' point of views right now and yeah. teen girls and college girls, but he can write for you too. Yeah, I might grow up one day and then I might write adults. So yeah, yeah we'll but see. But then but then you'll start. You, you'll be like, I'll just grow up for that movie and then you'll. And then I'll be yeah. I'll be back to my stupid yeah. That's that's not fun. That's not fun at all. Yeah, I just want to be a kid forever. Well, awesome. Well, I I'm so happy you. Came in here to yeah, talk, it was and I'm great so proud of you. you. Yeah, and man. it's so amazing to see kind of your your career has just blossomed. I feel like in Thank the last you. few years, and since I've met you, so it's it's just it's such a joy for me to to go on that ride with you. And thank you yeah. for, for sharing. And all who this knew insight. all those conversations we were having all those years? We could have just been doing it on the microphone. Uh, hey, well, like, now from now on, right, I'm just no. like Chuck, you kind of come in after work exactly, today. Exactly <laughs> right. And just be like, okay, I can't talk to you at this party. We got to save it for <laughs> yeah, the mic. Yeah, save, right. save it for when you come in studio. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, where can people kind of follow you? to keep up with your career and all your stuff on social media um i am at, oh sorry i'm at uh, at <laughs> chuck off on twitter and on instagram i don't remember my instagram <laughs> because i've posted like three times in the past two chuck, years we gotta get you up on that social I know, media I man know, but i'm definitely uh, yeah i gotta tweet a little bit more but the thing is like i i'm a like a very verbose joke writer so mm. 140 characters is not enough for not me. enough for i you. need more i need some ramp That's why you up. gotta do the insta because then it's a picture. Because then it's a picture, Visual. but then I can make as long a caption as exactly. I want, right? Okay. You could hashtag to your little heart's content. Yeah, I got to start doing that more. I got to start doing that more. Well, oh, you know, I remembered. <laughs> um, Instagram is at uh, zero chucks. That's what it is. There we yes. go. Yes, boom. So Awesome. I love the puns. Yes, I like to make my name rhyme with profanity <laughs> because I, that's the word probably I use most often during the day. So <laughs> Good to know. See, Keaton sense. doesn't rhyme with very many No. Profanity. Eaten, beaten, skeeton. Skeeton. No. Um, no. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know if you want to use that. There we go. That was my improv nickname, but I didn't. Nice. It was only because I didn't know what it meant. That was really your I Like, literally, I had no idea. It was right when that song, oh, yeah, you skeet, know, skeet. Yeah, right. I, and I go, and I go, what is skeet? That was my first cheerleading dance was to that song, and they were teaching me a step, stomp one. And I was on the Clovers team, and uh, I thought I was a tour. I was yeah, definitely a Toro. A toro. Yeah. I had no idea. <laughs> And uh, yeah, they so everybody just started calling me Skeet Keat because I didn't know what it meant. And, and then, then you I found, found out, out what it and meant, you were like, and I was like, you I guys need a new suck. Nickname. Yeah, like this, <laughs> this is, a, is not a good this nickname. This can't stick. No, <laughs> this, please, man. This is no, <laughs> no good. Well, you guys can check out all of season one of Dear White People on Netflix yes. now. Also, again, you can watch Fat Camp on iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, 
Is it still playing on BET tonight or? Um, yeah, it's on B. It was on BET this afternoon. This afternoon, okay. Uh, but I, I BET they usually run yeah, stuff more they, than once. Yeah, they'll run stuff so, yeah, more. Check so you your will... check your local listings for uh, for whatever <laughs> BET it. wants to run. Uh, Fat Camp. And again. where can we follow Fat Camp on social media? Anywhere? Or? Um, I I don't know that we have a the movie has a Twitter handle, but okay. uh, yeah, if you if you Just Google hashtag, it, yeah, yeah hashtags yeah. or whatever, like the, it'll it'll pop up in your search engine. Yeah, so. let Chuck know how you feel about the film. Guys. Yeah, only Just only positive stuff. I don't I don't want to know any of the next. L. Wood says, or all of her sororities say, keep it positive. There you go. You know, yeah. you know that musical, right? <laughs> I'm gonna play that song for you. you know oh, that I've song? never seen the musical. Oh my god, there's a song called "Keep It Positive." And really? It just, any t- I, I saw. The, I mean, I saw the movie, but I didn't see the musical version of it. All okay, right, I'm gonna send it. It's to you. worth it. It's, it's worth it's checking so it out. It's so worth it. It's so. It's so much fun. Okay. Uh, it's just like yeah, tongue and cheek humor. Anyways, check out all those awesome things Chuck is doing. When uh, is we we still don't know when Stepsisters is out. No, so. that's yeah, but that is at Stepsisters MOV. Steps at Stepsisters awesome. Move. Cool. Uh, and so you'll be able to follow them on the social medias, and uh, yeah, that'll that'll be posting updates there on when it's coming out and where you can find it and all that fun stuff. Sweet. Well, you guys can follow me all over the interwebs at Keaton Markey. I keep it easy. Uh, thank you so <laughs> much for watching this edition of I Talk Movies here on the Popcorn Talk Network, and we will see you next time. From producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network, we would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Popcorn Talk Network or its owners or principals.